Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Spirit Airlines Inc., ticker symbol SAVE, SAVE. As you may or may not know, JetBlue recently announced that they made a $3.7 billion offer to acquire Spirit Airlines. Currently, that merger would have to be ratified by a Spirit shareholder vote. That's going to be held on October 19th. And the deal would need approval from U.S. antitrust regulators. Currently, there's the potential for holdup over a Northeastern Corridor alliance that JetBlue currently has with American Airlines. That may or may not even have any effect on the Spirit JetBlue potential deal. To talk about the financials of this potential merger, JetBlue is proposing a $3.7 billion acquisition of Spirit, which works out to an offer price of about $33.50 per share. Currently, Spirit Airlines is trading for $18.82 per share, so there is quite a big gap between that JetBlue offer price and Spirit Airlines' current stock price. We're going to be going through our fundamental analysis today to dig deeper into Spirit's financials and try to understand if JetBlue's offer to acquire Spirit makes sense based off of Spirit's existing fundamentals. Currently, their stock price is down 29% in the last year. Over three years, they're down 18% compounded annually. Their stock price has almost fallen in half, and it has not bounced back to where it was trading at prior to their declines in the first half of 2020. In the first half of 2020, over the past five years, Spirit Airlines is also down by about 40%. Going back 11 years, however, to when Spirit Airlines first became a publicly listed business, the company has returned about 6% compounded annually. Spirit Airlines is trading $2 over their 52-week low, which is down about $10 from their 52-week high. Currently, over 5.5% of their shares outstanding are sold short and they have a $2 billion market cap. For some more background about the business, Spirit Airlines Inc. serves the United States, Latin America, and the Caribbean as an airline operator. It primarily offers customers unbundled base fares to strip out any unneeded travel amenities. If needed, a customer can elect for additional options at an extra charge. Flight crews are entirely interchangeable across all aircraft, and maintenance and other support services are simplified due to not having an overly complex fleet. The company has one operating segment, air transportation, owing to its system-wide route structure. It may decide to expand its network if a market is underserved or overpriced, and the majority of revenue is derived from the United States. As of the end of last year, the company had a fleet of 173 Airbus single-aisle aircraft. The company was formerly known as Clipper Trucking Company and changed its name to Spirit Airlines Inc. in 1992. Spirit Airlines was founded in 1964 and is headquartered in Miramar, Florida. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Spirit Airlines based off of their business fundamentals. This analysis is both an opportunity to learn in public, and it's still a work in progress, so it's going to continue to evolve over time and keep getting better and better. So with that said, let's get right into our analysis today. So starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So there are two reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for 14%, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves by only looking at businesses that are at least twice as good as average. Then, critically, over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns and these underlying business returns are gonna be captured here by return on capital. So Spirit had above average returns on capital prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. Since 2020, COVID has really had a tremendous impact on the airline industry as a whole. And even with government-sponsored aid, Spirit did not fare very well and they produced negative returns on capital in each of the past two years. Even this year, over the last 12 months, they're still producing negative returns on capital. Airline industry as a whole is still dealing with the effects of COVID. Air travel right now is not a smooth process with a lot of flights canceled nationwide, and the industry is not anywhere near where it was pre-pandemic. Averaged out spirit is only earning about 3% returns on capital over the last five years. This is going to be an X as these are below average returns. And so we are 0 for 1 here to start off on metric number 1. Metric number two, here we're taking a high-level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. 
Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. So surprisingly, Spirit has actually grown their revenues over this time. They took quite a hit with their revenues declining by more than 50% year over year from 2019 until 2020. However, they've rebounded quite strongly since then in terms of total revenues. The business has not fared as well when it comes to their earnings or free cash flows. The business had positive earnings prior to the pandemic. Since then, their earnings are now negative. And pretty much over the course of all five years here, the business has been consuming a good amount of free cash flow. And that has not changed since the pandemic occurred. So this is going to be another X here on metric number two. Metric number three is building off of the previous metric. Here we're looking at the business from the perspective of an individual shareholder in the company by looking at their per share metrics. So specifically in metric number three, we want their earnings per share to have grown over the last five years. Unfortunately, as we established earlier, their earnings have swung from being positive to negative over this time frame. So this is going to be an X here. At the same time, their earnings per share are actually declining at a rate that's faster than their earnings have dropped which means that they've been diluting shareholders over this time frame. In fact, in an effort to stay liquid, Spirit Airlines diluted shareholders by more than 56% in the past five years. Much of this dilution has occurred from 2020 onwards, but that's not a great sign to see here as a long-term shareholder in the company, because when you're purchasing a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. When the company issues new shares and dilutes existing shareholders, they're decreasing your ownership percentage of the business, which means that they're decreasing the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to. So we don't like to see shareholder dilution unless a company would be pretty well egregiously overvalued. Spirit issued new shares to stay liquid. It's better for shareholders that a company would do that than go bankrupt altogether, but not a great sign here. And this is going to be our third X in a row to start off. Things aren't looking so great for Spirit so far. Metric number four is also going to be very similar. Here we're looking for five year free cash flow per share growth. While their free cash flows are still negative, they've actually decreased the amount of free cash flow that they're consuming in their business over the last five years. And so even though it's still negative, it's not as negative as it was in 2017 or as bad as it got in 2020. So this is actually going to be our first check here as it signals that the underlying fundamentals of the business are recovering from their 2020 woes, but they're still not looking great. Another thing to note is that over extended periods of time, meaning 10 years and out, we want a business's cash flows and earnings to be roughly equal. Depending on industry dynamics, some companies will just have higher earnings and lower cash flows overall. So while we are seeing some disparity here, that could be due to factors such as industry dynamics. And given the stress the business has endured over the last two years, it wouldn't seem like this fluctuation would be the biggest thing to worry about here. So again, this is going to be our first check. And through four metrics, we are one for four. Metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short term liabilities minus cash and short term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the last five years. This will help us get a sense for how the business is employing leverage. We don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, overly levered businesses will have the greatest potential for performing especially poorly. They'll be at the greatest risk of failure. So at the end of last year, Spirit had about $3.7 billion of net debt. They actually had quite a bit of a net debt position even coming into the pandemic. So the shock to the travel industry certainly did not help them and only put them in a worse financial position as a business. Currently, they have $3.9 billion of net debt. And over the past five years, the company has consumed $1.5 billion of free cash flow. They only produced positive free cash flows in 2019. So that means that this business is very capital intensive relative to the cash flows that they're spitting out. They're not spitting out any cash flows right now. They're consuming that all. So given both their high net debt load and the cash that the business has to consume, this is going to be an X here on metric number five. And this is potentially a pretty concerning sign here, as in order to continue fueling their business, the company is either going to have to take out more debt, issue new shares, or sell off assets. Again, if Spirit shareholders vote in favor of it, JetBlue has come out with a $3.5 billion acquisition offer for Spirit. So to get a better sense of how the business could fare into the future, you'd want to see what the combined balance sheet of those businesses would potentially look like to get a better perspective here if that hypothetically combined business entity were in a better position to manage their debt loads. So again, this is going to be an X here on metric number five. So far through five metrics, we've only got one check. 
Finally, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to total enterprise value yield to be above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury. So the reason we're using total enterprise value here instead of the company's market cap is that total enterprise value is going to be closer to the economic reality of the company because it takes into account both the business's market cap and their net debt position. So it'll be more as if Spirit were a private business. Currently, Spirit has just under a $6 billion enterprise value. And as we learned, the company has consumed $1.5 billion of free cash flow in the past five years. Even currently, their last 12 months of free cash flow are still negative, meaning that the company is still consuming free cash flow and is not spitting off free cash flow, which would give them more flexibility. Free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business, and it can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, make acquisitions, reinvest back in the business, or pay down debt. In fact, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable rate, is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. So the fact that Spirit Airlines is not throwing off free cash flows here is again a concerning sign. And so this is going to be another X here on metric number six. Then another thing to note here is that over the last 12 months, Spirit has actually paid out a special dividend of $2.22 per share. So given the precarious financial position of the business and without having a background of what this actually was for, this would seem to be an interesting use of capital here by management likely not the best thing that they could have been doing over this time. So in summary, Spirit Airlines only checks the box on one out of six metrics. Currently, the only bright side from our analysis is that the company is consuming less free cash flow now than they have been in prior years, but the business is earning below average returns on capital. Their returns on capital are still negative over the last 12 months, and they've been negative since 2020. Their revenues are surprisingly up over the last five years, but their earnings are well down. And the company came into the COVID-19 pandemic with a lot of debt, and since then, they've just saddled on even more. In addition to that, they've diluted shareholders by nearly 56%, and the business has consumed over $1.5 billion of free cash flow in the past five years alone. So given all of those factors and the airline industry positioning as a whole, that they're still trying to rebound from the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, it makes sense here that Spirit Airlines would potentially be a merger acquisition target. Again, shareholders of Spirit Airlines are going to be voting on October 19th to either accept or decline the merger acquisition offer from JetBlue. Frontier had also made a competing offer to merge with Spirit Airlines, but it was significantly less than the $3.5 billion that JetBlue is offering. Again, that comes out to about $32.50 per share as JetBlue's takeover offer. And currently, Spirit Airlines is trading for just under $19 per share. So if that deal were to be ratified by shareholders and approved by the U.S. justice system, then there would potentially be an arbitrage opportunity here in the stock price of Spirit Airlines. Based off of where the business is as a standalone business, while they are recovering from where they were at in 2020, it looks like the company still has a lot of work to do. Keep in mind that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any possible investment, it's important to consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time to dig in and learn more about Spirit Airlines here. If you're interested in learning more about the company, I highly recommend reading through their 10Ks. You can get a sense of the history of the business, understand the risks that the company faces. You'll also get a deeper understanding of operating results, potentially opportunities for the business, and the airline industry more generally. In addition to that, you'll also be able to understand both the integrity and competence of management, especially as it pertains to how they're approaching things like capital allocation and how Spirit's incentive structures are set up for management. When you're done with that, I would also recommend reading through some of their recent earning call transcripts to get a more nuanced quarter by quarter perspective of the company. There's been a lot of news surrounding airlines, especially over the past two years as they're operating in a radically changed environment from what it was previously. And so this would be a business where a quarter to quarter update, especially in their operating results, would likely provide a lot of additional perspective here. As a value investor, you want to learn about a company as if you owned 100% of it. You want to understand its underlying essence and truly know all of its ins and outs and understand what's important and what's not. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Spirit Airlines, Inc. Ticker symbol SAVE. 
save. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Spirit Airlines with me today, and have a great day.